After the e-tron and the e-tron GT, Audi now presents with the Q4 e-tron, the first fully battery electric car in the compact segment. How that car drives, how it behaves, what it delivers, how about charging and range, we're going to find out today. If you're interested in a Q4 e-tron, you have to expect a price here in Germany, which starts at about 43,000 euros. If you want the middle version, which is the Q440 e-tron, that starts at 47,500. And if you want to have the top one, it's the car that we're driving, then you have to expect something around 53,000. With a width of 1,87 m, the Q4 e-tron is rather compact and typical Audi comes with a large single-frame radiator grille. For the first time, it's now possible to order Matrix LED headlights, which offer four different daytime running light signatures to choose from. The base version of the Q4 e-tron is already very nicely equipped, so you will always have a climate control on board, and you will also have, for instance, this multifunctional steering wheel and a lot of other stuff. But it is not a real Audi if you can't configure a lot of extras into that car. And with that, you have to be quite careful because you can easily raise the price of the car quite up to the sky if you do click everything you may like. Uh, one option that you may think about is the so-called Edition 1 models because they do offer quite a nice package of extras but they are not very cheap so you can easily pay eight, 9,000 extras for these models as well. At the moment, you can order three different powertrains for the Q4 e-tron. The smallest one is for the Q435 e-tron, which offers you 125 kilowatts as a maximum, and that's a rear-wheel powered car. The next step is the Q440 e-tron, that then features 150 kilowatts, also rear-wheel powered. The top version, the car we're driving, is the Q450 e-tron Quattro, and as you can hear, this is a car with two engines, so both axled are powered and that car features up to 220 kilowatt as a maximum. Important with this engine is the rear one is a permanent synchron engine, the front one is an asynchron engine which can just run if not needed without giving you any negative effects. When we talk about performance, the top version accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in only 6.2 seconds, top speed for all the models is 180 km per hour. When we talk about range, the winner here is the Q440 e-tron that offers you up to 520 km regarding to WLTP, but also the top version offers you a little less than 490. The materials and the craftsmanship in that car are typical Audi, so I would say on a quite high level. So you will find soft touch, you will find leather, you will find um, metal, you will find glossy black and loads of very nice surfaces and that together really gives the car a very, very nice look. Everything is really nicely made and if you're looking for plastic you will find it uh, a little bit lower than the center console, which means, yes, of course, there is plastic, but that's also very nicely made, so it looks great. It gives you, yeah, it doesn't make any disturbing noises, so that really is something I really do like inside on the car. Another thing which I really do like is how these displays and everything is orientated to the driver, which really yeah, surrounds you, and that gives you the perfect cozy feeling while driving. On the side, the Q4's large wheel catch the eye. The base version comes already on 19-inch rims. However, 20 and 21-inch LA wheels can be ordered. Overall, the Q4 e-tron is 4,59 m long and has a wheelbase of 2,76 m. The wheel arches are strongly emphasized by distinctive lines. Together with the high shoulders and a flat window graphic, this ensures a very dynamic look. There are no analog instruments anymore in that car, so the cockpit always features a 10.25 inch screen, which you can configure the way you want. So you can have, for instance, the uh, with a view uh, the button here, you can change between the two different views. And on top of this, you can have different informations in the center, which means you can have things like range, things like uh, infotainment or the big map or whatever you prefer to look at. On top of this, you will always have a 10-inch touchscreen for the infotainment, and that infotainment features live data. You can also connect uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to your mobile devices. You, of course, find digital radio and many, many other things. If you say 10.1-inch is not enough, you can have up to 11.6 as well. 
The maximum boot capacity of the Q4 e-tron is 520 liters with the rear seats up and that increases up to 1490 if you fold down the complete rear bench. But that's the normal one. If you talk about the more sporty, the e-tron Sportback, that car delivers 15 liters more with the rear seats up and 30 less with the rear seats down. Of okay. course, you can tow things with your Q4 e-tron. This is an optional feature. The maximum tow capacity is one ton for the rear powered cars and 1.2 for the Quattro version. The most important driver assist and safety systems are always on board as standard. For instance, you will always find a lane assist and you will also always find all the emergency braking systems. But of course, this is an Audi and you can have a lot more. Most of it is um, packed in quite nice packages. And um, so you will definitely find what you're looking for to make the car as comfortable and as safe as you want. The rear is dominated by the broad shoulders and the flat taillights connected by a light band. In addition, the e-tron signature was embossed in the rear bumper, making clear that this is an electric vehicle. The amount of space that car features here at the front row is really very nice. So me, I'm about 1,95 meter tall. I do sit perfectly and very comfortable in the car. Everything is adjusted the way I want and I still have some head space left. Um, our car is featuring the sport seat with the integrated headrest and this is something for tall people which not fits perfectly but they are very comfortable um, but if you're a tall person you have to try because there are other optional seats available. How much space the car offers behind me we're going to find out while having a short stop. So this is the short stop over to see if I can sit behind me. I didn't change my sitting position and now ah, that doesn't look bad I think. Entering is easy. Let's see. Yeah, that really works. So if you can see, I do have about one hand space in front of my knees. There is no headroom left, but still, I'm 1 meter 95, quite heavy, I would say, and I sit behind me. And um, yeah, that absolutely works. But the only downside is when I talk about my foot, because um, my feet are under the seat and they do not have any space left. One reason, of course, is the seat is at the, at the lowest point because I'm quite a tall person. But I would expect a bit more, but nothing really important. An absolute highlight is for sure the new head-up display. And that really not only projects a very nice and big picture in front of the car on the road to really assure that you will always have your eyes where they belong. But on top of this, that now features augmented reality, which means you do get extra information like um, where you're going to go regarding to directions from the sat-nav or how far away is the car in front of you and if you are in the middle of the lane or not. So loads of very nice and very nicely yeah, presented information while driving. The Q4 e-tron not arrives a moment too early on the market because there are already some competitors in the compact electric SUV segment. The Polestar 2, the Mercedes EQB and the Skoda Enyaq are also belong to this vehicle category. And the new Hyundai Ioniq is also coming soon. My test car should take up to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 km driven. And as you can see in the cockpit, we use 21.5, which is really close to the data sheet. But I have to be honest, so we drove on the motorway at the beginning of our test drive and there you should expect something about 24, 25, and we had a, had a speed of about 120, 130 kilometers per hour. But now, after about 110 kilometers, as you see, the average is now 21.4. And I think that really is quite a nice number. There are two different batteries available for the Q4 e-tron. So the smallest uh, engine, which is the Q435 e-tron, that one features a 52 kilowatt hour battery net capacity. The other two, they do have a 77 kilowatt hour battery on board. When we talk about charging, Audi promises 100 kilowatt as a maximum uh, charging rate for the smaller and 125 for the bigger battery if you're on a DC charger. If you go on a wall box, that's a 7.4 or 11 kilowatts. Uh, when we talk about the charging time, they say, of course, we will not reach that here because um, our car still has about 35% battery left. But if everything is perfectly set up, you're going to reach about, in 10 minutes of time, 130 kilometers of extra range. Recuperation is crucial for an electric car. And so Audi offers a standard mode, which is called D. And that is like, if you lift the foot off the pedal, it's like sailing. So no, nothing really happens. It's even less than with a combustion engine and an automatic gearbox. 
But on top of that, you can have B, which is a completely different mode, because that one provides you with a maximum recuperation. And if you then lift your foot, the car really reduces speed massively. Um, and if you say you don't like that, you also have the opportunity in D to change the uh, between different modes while using this paddle here at the steering wheel. And so you can really adjust the level of recuperation the way you want. Regarding to the storage compartments, Audi really made their homework when we talk about the Q4 e-tron. So you will not only find standard compartments in the door, at the front, in the lower part, you will also find a bottle holder here at the top, which is perfectly reachable. On top of this, you have the center console here, which is looking like it's hovering. And beneath that, you have a big compartment where you can also use wireless charging. Behind that, you do find two extra cup holders, and then you have this adjustable armrest with quite a big compartment underneath that. On top, at the front, you will find a standard glove box. Looking on the rear seats, yes, of course, you do have standard compartments in the door, but you will also find these bottle holders as well, very similar to the ones here at the front. And on top, if you need extra cup holders, you, of course, find two of them in the middle armrest on the rear seats as well. That was my first test drive in the new Audi Q4 50 e-tron Quattro, the actual top model of the new Audi Q4 e-tron series. And I have to say, yes, of course, that car is an absolute pleasure to drive, but I think a modern battery electric vehicle must deliver more, and this is what Audi promises. So they say that car should take up to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven, and as you can see in our display, it shows us about 21. Quite nice, and with that, I think a real range of about 300 up to 400 kilowatt with a fully charged battery in a normal traffic situation but depending on the drive and the weather should be easily achievable. On top of that with that um, trim level with that amount of extras this car of course is an absolute pleasure and it's comfortable quiet and really nice to drive but that car got its sticker price and I expect something about 70,000 euro but if you want to pay this you really get something very nice to drive. Now, with. You could only buy two different fully electric Mercedes models, which are the EQC, which is an SUV, and the EQV, which is the electric V-Class. But now things change because now you're going to find a more compact version, which is the new Mercedes EQA. And they do promise more than 400 kilometers of range. And they say this is the new entrance model for the electric world of Mercedes. How much fun that car is, how about charging, and how about the real electric range, what it delivers regarding to driver assistance and safety system, and if it is fun to drive, we're gonna find out now. Every time you drive in a battery electric vehicle, you instantly recognize it's so quiet inside of the car. The only thing you hear a bit are the tires, and that's really it. And that really makes the drive so much more comfortable and quiet. At the front, it's most obvious that this is not a car with a standard combustion engine like the GLA. This must be electric because the whole grill is completely covered. And on top of this, you do find this light bar up here, which we already know from the new EQC. And then when you look at the headlamps, they always come standard with LED technology, but these feature this blue bar here on top, and that tells you this must be a complete electric vehicle. Looking at the front bumper, this one is um, regarding to the drag coefficient again optimized because that's a lot more important here than with a standard combustion vehicle. The basic EQA offers amongst other things active lane keeping assist and brake assist. The list of the optional assistance systems includes a traffic sign recognition, an active distance assist, a parking assist and many more. The so-called driver assistance package is particularly extensive. It basically offers all the necessary systems for semi-autonomous driving. You can choose between different recuperation modes um, while driving the EQA. And that means you can have, um, while, choosing, uh, while using the pedals here at the steering wheel, um, a lot of recuperation every time you lift your foot off the pedal. Or you can have a feeling like driving a standard combustion car with an automatic gearbox. So nearly nothing. And on top of this, you can choose a mode which is called D-Auto. And that then chooses automatically the most efficient uh, kind of a recuperation depending on the power you need and depending on the landscape and the drive. 
As standard, the new EQA always features a minimum 18-inch alloys. Of course, they are optimized regarding to the drag coefficient because that's an electric vehicle, but if you want, you can order up to 20-inch. And we're talking about the measurements of the car. It's very much the same as with the GLA. The only difference is in length because that car with 4 meters 46 is about 5 centimeters longer, but with the same wheelbase. And then when you look at the side, the design, it's all the same. The only exception is this batch here, which tells you, yep, that is an EQA. We are on the road for quite a while now, so nearly 50 kilometers. And um, the consumption of our car looks quite nice. So we're talking about 18.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. That's not a bad number. And I didn't even check how much I use while driving. So I think that's more than fair. The interior of the EQA really looks very nice. And they do use materials like metal. They do use glossy black. Um, they do have um, soft touch. And what they also show is rosé gold, which you do find here at the air outtakes. And that is something you former only found in um, Maybach cars. And then later they adapt that for the EQ family. And that's something really that makes the car look unique. And something very unique in our car is we do have seats in here, which have a mixture out of um, a yeah, fake leather and fabric made out of plastic bottles. So that's really an environmental friendly seat. At the rear of our car, you do find quite prominent the signature calls EQA 250. Important here is there will be different cars coming, not only 250, so just remember EQA. And then as with the front, we do not only find LED lamps, we also find this light bar here running from one side to the other, and we have splitter taillights, and that gives you a wider boot to open. And on the other hand, a very nice signature, which really shows you this is a very modern car. And then we do have, as with the front, a completely revised bumper, which is better regarding to the drag coefficient. And we have this chrome part here, and that part really reminds me of standard exhaust pipes. The EQA 250 is available from 47,540 euros in the progressive version. Also available are Electric Art and AMG line versions or the Night Package. The Special Model Edition 1 is based on the AMG line and offers a particularly extensive range of equipment at a price of 8,520 euros. The EQA should take 17.7 kilowatt hours per 100 km driven and should deliver a range of a maximum of 426 km. When we started our drive, we saw that the car offers a bit less than 400, which I still think is quite fair. Uh, and then when we, when we drove, we saw similar numbers to what the data sheet says. Um, but we're in Stuttgart, so which means we go up and down from time to time. And then you can um, also see that if you go up, of course, this number increases quickly. And if you go down again, that number decreases quickly. And at the end of the day, um, we had something which is about 19 point whatever um, as an average after about 60 kilometers of a drive, which I still think is quite a fair number. But on the other hand, we drove, I would say, more easy than sporty. The battery of the EQA features a net capacity of 66.5 kilowatt hours as a maximum. And of course, you can charge that car as a standard Warpox. Um, with 11 kilowatts and that then takes you from 10 to 80 percent five hours 45 minutes a lot quicker is a DC quick charger because that car can take up to 100 kilowatts and then it takes 30 minutes from 10 to 80 percent of charging the battery um, with the Mercedes app you can charge your car at 300,000 different charging points in the whole of Europe and from this year onwards you can also uh, use something that's called green charging which means you have more environmental friendly power and that then means you have about 175,000 charging points in the whole of Europe available. There are two things I don't like so much with the car. The first thing is you do have this auto recuperation mode which basically works fine but on the other hand if you do drive in a hilly area uh, the car from time to time reduces the speed a lot when you lift the foot of the pedal and sometimes it doesn't. And so you cannot really adjust yourself or your behave while driving to that program. And the other thing which I don't like so much is with the front wheel powered car and that amount of power, the car I think is too powerful because you get slippy uh, tires when you push the pedal to the metal. And this is why I'm really looking forward having the all wheel drive version to test that. 
The base equipment of the EQA is more than fair. And as you see in the list, there is a lot to explore. But of course, we're talking about a Mercedes, and so you can order a lot of little or less little things on top. But have a look into the list. There are loads of them, and each of them costs extra money. When you open the hood of the new EQA, you will not find a front or front trunk because here you will instantly find the powertrain. And that means we do have an electric engine that features 140 kilowatt and 375 newton meters of maximum torque. And that power is delivered by a one gear gearbox to the front axle. And um, Mercedes says that they will um, produce different models of that car, but they didn't say details. The only thing they promise is there will be models more powerful with more than 200 kilowatts and there will be models with bigger batteries and they then should offer a range of over 500 kilometers um, to drive. And if you want and if you wait a little bit, you can also have that car as a four-wheel drive version that then features two electric motors and then you have not only the power, you also have all-wheel drive and maybe even a bigger range. So now we're on the motorway with our EQA to see how the car works here. And the first thing I can tell you, it's still quiet in the car. You do hear some wind, but we're driving about 130 kilometers per hour already. Uh, what is changing is the consumption. That goes up, and so we're now above 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven, but still something not unfair. For everybody who wants to know, the car can drive up to 160 kilometers per hour, and there it is electronically limited but I think that's more than enough for an electric vehicle. The 140 kilowatt or 190 horsepower combined with 375 newton meters of our car are coming out of an electric engine. And that makes the world different because you can have the power a lot more instant than you will ever get it from any combustion engine in the world. And so that car, even though it's a bit more heavy, can really be driven, yeah, quite dynamic and can provide you with loads of fun because the battery, which is the most important part of the weight, is mounted in the lowest part of the body of the car, and that gives you a very low point of gravity. But on the other hand, if you really drive quick, and if you really want to do hard cornering or hard braking, you of course then feel the weight because that always wants to go straight forward or to the outside. That's what weight does. The boot capacity of our EQA is 340 liters with the rear seats up. If you fold them completely down, that increases up to 1,320 liters. That sounds quite nice, but if you compare that with the normal GLA, you do find that this is about 100 liters less in both situations. And when you look down here, yeah, that's very nice and flat, but the compartment here is so small, there is only the cable that fits in there. Our test car is featuring, aside of many other things, the optional head-up display. And that not only presents you as standard the actual speed you're driving or the speed you're allowed to drive, it also has an extra, let's say, meter, which shows you how much power the car is taking at the moment. And that really gives you a completely different idea of what you're doing with your car and when your car needs extra energy. And that may help you to adapt your drive. That was my first test drive in the new Mercedes EQA, so the new entrance model of the electromobility world of Mercedes-Benz. And I really have to say I do like the car a lot because the car offers a very nice range. It offers a good consumption and it on top offers the space you need for every day. And so the package really delivers a lot more than you need for your day-to-day -day driving.